what's good y'all welcome to an episode of buzz boys i'm your host terry i know i don't really usually say that so i'm like i'm gonna start introducing myself to y'all the channel's grown we almost had 700 subscribers please get me there but anyways let's get to the topic at hand there's only one carolina fuck you talk about unc steps on south carolina with little to no problem um a few a few Drake May interceptions that pissed me off and cost me a lot of money. But anyways, besides that, I mean, nine sacks, just a historic performance by the defense. Um, most sacks in the game in 15 years. And that's when we had eight. So there's no telling how many nine, like it's no telling how long it's been since we had nine sacks. Um, we had 17 sacks total last year. So like just to put that into perspective, we – almost bro got half of our total from last year in one game like yo the defense looks stout even missing a starting corner got ruled out for the season um like not even that long before kickoff um missing two top wide receivers free tez I'm going to make a whole separate video about that. I was going to try to get out before the game started, but I've just been super busy the last few days. Um, so if you're new to the channel, just to give you guys a breakdown of what this channel is about, obviously it's Buzz Boys. It's a Hornets channel, but you know I'm a Hornets fan, Panthers fan, UNC fan, and I'm going to try to be more multifaceted um, going forward. So um, if you're a Panthers fan, you know, hey, first game, regular season is coming up. And also, I'm going to do a video about the 53-man cut down because there were a few surprises. I know I'm a few days late, but I'm still going to do it. Um, and then on the UNC side of things, man, football is in full swing. First game, Drake May, Heisman candidate. And we did good today, man. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get into the game. I'll try to keep this under 15, 10, 15. Minutes. We'll see. We'll see. But, um... Anyway, like the very first thing I have written down is only one Carolina, man. That whole, oh, bro, when somebody says Carolina, I don't care what state you're from. Your mind goes to North Carolina, bro. Every time. I don't care. I don't care, bro. And then on top of that, it's like, oh, USC. USC is in California, bro. Like, <laughs> who hears USC and thinks, oh, University of South Carolina. And on top of that, y'all name is the Gamecocks. We're not losing to a team called the Cox, bro. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Come on now. Like, let's be real, bro. Let's be real. Anyway, moving on, bro. Um, I just had to, you know, silence the haters, man. It, it was just like, I've never seen so many memes and stuff going into a Carolina game unless it's like Duke or even NC State. Because NC State goes so hard when they're about to play us and we destroy them in every sport. But they go hard with the disrespect. So that like the South Carolina thing is just like a surprise to me. Like, come on now. Y'all little brother. Y'all are literally beneath us. Literally. Literally. Moving on. Drake May got out to a great start. Um, a great start. Like he was like 10 for 10. Like I, I, I I'm I'm gonna pull up the exact number that he was before you know his streak was snapped. But he I think he started off like 10 for 10 or 11 for 11, somewhere in there. He was having a great game. I mean, he still finished with a, with a good game. But um, it was 31-14, to 14 and we threw a pick. And to me, you know, I was watching on my phone at first, so I didn't really, like, you know, I just saw a pick. I'm like, oh, my God. And, bro, I put a lot of money on Drake made to have no interceptions, so that shit pissed me off. But anyway, um, when I rewatched the first pick, it was like, it kind of was a forced throw, but it was really a 50-50 ball. He put faith in his receiver. His receiver did not run hard on the route. And um, that same receiver, I'm trying to think what his name was. I tweeted that he sucks. Uh, I don't remember, but he did. He, like, he had a couple of trash plays. And he's like, bro, if he was running hard on his route, he would have either caught the ball or at least could have stopped the interception. You know, like, um, so the first one was kind of just like, damn, bro. But I still think he probably should have thrown the ball away. But he trusted his receiver to make the play. The second interception basically came off something that should have been caught. Um, but I personally didn't think we should have been throwing the ball at that point in the game anyway. With the first interception, it was 31-14. to 14. Just run the ball. 
just run the ball. Like, shoot his clock down. I think it was the third quarter at that point. Just start running the ball. Like, it was second down. And, you know, just run the ball, bro. And then that fourth one, I mean, that second one in the fourth quarter, once again, it's 31 to 17. Just run the ball. You know, stop, stop trying. You know, I know Carolina, you know, we put up big numbers. But, bro, just win the game and run the clock out because our defense was playing stout. Like, there's no reason to be trying to, you know, get risky. Um, But anyway, you know, Drake May, still love him. Still my Heisman. Feel me? Moving on. This defense. Is it real? Is the defense real? Very first series, three and out. We started the game. I'm like, oh, shit, who is this? These are the Tar Heels that I know on defense. Okay. Then the next series, give up a touchdown quick. I'm like, oh, hell no. That shit was a fluke. <laughs> and then um, our defense got steady, man. We got steady, and, um, I mean, we weren't playing, bro. That run defense, oh, my God. Like, bro, I got to pull it up, but, bro, South Carolina, I'm pretty sure they finished with, like, negative rushing yards or, like, a few rushing yards. I know at one point they were at negative .3 yards per carry. Like, they weren't going anywhere. We killed the run game. Um, and then getting after the quarterback, Spencer Rattler, good quarterback, but getting after him with nine sacks, bro, come on. Us holding a team to 14, it's not like, you know, South Carolina sucks, bro. They're not ranked, but they don't suck. Um, bro, I was impressed, dog. Like, you know, I've been watching Carolina football forever, long as I can remember. This was the best defensive performance I've ever seen. And we didn't even have any turnovers. You know, we didn't force any fumbles or interceptions. Nine sacks. The most in 15 years in a game, dog. And it's probably more than that because that was when we had eight sacks. It's probably more. Nine sacks. We had 17 total sacks last year. Last year, we gave up four and a half yards per carry. This game, we didn't even give up a half a yard a carry. Oh, my God, bro. Like, the way we stopped the run, it was impeccable. So, you know, we're going to have to see, you know, how real this defense truly is because, I mean, them defensive backs still gave up big plays. Um, What was that dude's name? I can't remember his last name. Started with an L, but... uh. Number 17 for South Carolina, bro. It's the plays that he were making, which is like, damn, can we stop this motherfucker? So, you know, I got to see what the defensive back room could do. I, I hate that Storm Duck transferred. I don't know why he did that. But um, I don't know, man. I got to I gotta see if these defensive backs can hold up and really hold their own. But us holding a team to 14 points, bro. Uh, I mean, 17 points, excuse me. I'm super happy about that. The sacks. Super happy about that. Best defensive performance I've ever seen watching Carolina football, bro. Um, if we can keep defenses under 21 points, bro, we're winning damn near every game this year because our offense has never had a problem. We had 31 points, and that's with two of our top receivers out. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's just when it comes to Carolina football, can our defense not give up basketball scores? Like, literally, a Carolina football game might end 70 to 63. Like, yo, can we just play defense? Like, golly. But anyways, moving on, British Brooks, 100-plus yards, his second career 100-yard game. Um, This is his first game back in 2021. He missed the whole season last year. So happy to have him back. Um and, you know, we ran the ball, man. We ran the ball down their throats. And, you know, I wish we would have been running the ball a little bit earlier in the third and fourth quarters to prevent those Drake May interceptions because there really was no reason to be taking big shots downfield. Like, you know, we had to lead. I know you want to go for the kill shot, but when your running back's running as as effectively as he is, you know, you don't get away from that. Um, um, also, next thing, I already, t- already mentioned it. Miss our top two wide receivers. Um, still... Still got it done. Um, they're both transfers, so you know this would have been their first game for both of them. But they're still super talented, great transfers. Free Tez, 
Um, and like I said, I'm going to do a whole video about that because it's a really fucked up situation that makes no sense. The NCAA is a joke. Um, but yeah, another point, I already talked about it, but um, corner out for the year. I can't think of the name. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to have it right here. Um, my mind is just going blank right now. But he literally got hurt right like before the game. He got ruled out. Let me see. Dang, my shit is dead. I'll pull it up. But, yeah, I have it right here so I can talk about it more because I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, bro, it sucks that we're already having injuries. But um, I can't think of his name either. But number 20, true freshman, he stepped up, man. And he was supposed to be a backup cornerback. All of a sudden, thrown to the starting lineup, and he held his own. He gave up a few plays to number 17. Gave a few plays, a few big plays. But he held his own. And, you know, as a true freshman, Shit, he didn't look as bad as any of the other corners out there. You know what I'm saying? Our defensive back room has been our weakest point for years now. So, hey, he held his own compared to everybody else. Um, And last but not least, like I already said several times, man, Free Tez is really fucked up with the NCAA is doing to him. Long story short, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, basically, um, he played at North Carolina Central. In 2020, they canceled football because of COVID. There was no football season. So, of course, he transferred to, to somebody who had a football program. So, he transferred to Kent State, played there for two years. Then, back in January, on January 9th, he transferred to UNC. Well, on January 11th, the NCAA makes a rule saying that you can't transfer twice without sitting out a year. If you transfer twice, you have to sit out a year. They made that rule on January 11th, two days after Tess had already transferred. Y'all make up some imaginary rule after he already transferred. So how does that possibly affect him? Bro, this was back in January. It's September. Nine months for NCAA to easily fix this. And it hasn't been fixed. We had the governor, bro, Roy Cooper, talking about it, voicing it. Like, we've had... Literally everybody. The thing is, Kent State, the team, the school that he transferred from, wants him to be at UNC. They're happy with him. It, like, nobody is disapproving this except for the NCAA, which makes no sense because he transferred before the deadline, transferred before you made this stupid ass rule. So, what does that have to do with him? Like, it makes no fucking sense, man. NCAA is, is a joke and always has been, as we saw with just how they treated players even getting compensated, how we had to fight for that for how long like the ncaa is greedy they're stupid and yeah but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up um if you're new to the channel please subscribe on the grind to 700 subscribers i'm thankful to see the channel growing almost every time i check um and yeah man i'm, I'm gonna try my best to be multifaceted this year carolina football gonna be talking about it Panthers football, talking about it. Carolina basketball, talking about it. Um, and it, obviously, of course, the Hornets. And, you know, the season is a month away as far as the um, basketball goes. So, hey, man, we're going to be in full swim. We're going to be cranking out a lot of content for you guys. So, hey, for you guys, the only thing I can ask you guys to do for me is like, comment, and subscribe for the algorithm. You know, get me up there. So, keep growing this channel. But anyways, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Oh, and also, I just want to say congratulations to Mac Brown, first coach to ever win 100 games at two different schools, first coach to win 100 games at Carolina. So, hey, shout out to him, bro. He was turned up listening to NBA Youngboy. He was turned. He got his 100 jersey. That shit looked cool as fuck. So, yeah, I just want to say shout out to Mac Brown.